I'm Christy Cashman, and this is Backstory. I'm here with Dennis Lehane, author of nine novels. Four of them are New York Times bestsellers, and three of them have been adapted to major motion pictures, Mystic River, Gone Baby Gone, and Shutter Island. Why is it, Dennis, that so many of your novels have been adapted? Luck, luck, truly. Um, I think that the first one was, obviously the Mystic River um, situation was a little different. Um, but after that, after that, won a bunch of awards. After that, was seen as a, as um, you know an actor's vehicle. I think in Hollywood, everybody kind of, you know, the, the tail wags the dog, and so everybody wanted to be in the Dennis Lehane business suddenly. And then when the second one, Gone Baby Gone, turned out to be really good, then it became like, do you got a laundry list we can produce? I mean, it just became kind of silly after a certain point. I think it's interesting that your your books are really such a pleasure to read and that the development of the characters are so rich that they translate to screen so well. Do you feel like any of the dimension is lost? Let's put it this way. You can have three pages of really beautiful writing that will take you deep, really deep into a character. But a really great actor, a Sean Penn, can convey that same thing with a look. So that, that's the, that's the trade-off, if you will. Do you lose some things? Absolutely. But do you gain some things when you get a film made? Yeah, absolutely too. Some of your novels are mysteries that involve the case of a missing person. What is it about that uh, theme that inspires you so much? With a missing person, what the reader's invited into, what the main characters are invited into, is other people's lives. They, they want, and so you basically get to take your reader and your characters on this journey into a cave and out the other side. That's what happens when you go searching for a missing person, and that's what makes for an interesting novel, I guess. So when in doubt, have somebody vanish. I also feel like a lot of your characters are actually missing elements of themselves. A good book is about what a character wants, and a great book is about what a character needs. But by the end, yeah. what matters is that the character gets what they need, which is usually some type of, of self-revelation. It's almost as if your characters are drawn to the idea that the dark side, uh, the side that we hide, is the real part of life, while the light side, the side that we project, is more fake. I was at a party about a year ago in Florida, where I live part of the time, and there was a guy there whose job was to sell poisonous land to, to schools, to communities. But in society, we say, that guy's okay. He's just making a buck. He's just doing what he needs to do. If a drug dealer had walked into the same party and was talking about how he made a living, we'd all hiss and boo and push him out of that party. I'm fascinated by that mm -hmm. because I would much rather hang out with the drug dealer. Can you give an example of how one of the characters that you wrote about when he was adapted maybe brought more life to the screen? Mark Ruffalo in Shutter Island is an incredible performance. And it's, mm -hmm. it's even more incredible when you realize how quiet it is because people don't notice it. He is working on about four different layers. I think that's arguably my favorite performance out of any of my films. Do you feel like the uh, consultation that you might give to one of the directors is a help or a hindrance during the shooting? I say you call me, I don't call you. So I know that it is always a help. They're coming to me to ask. I'm not going to them. And uh, honestly, what are you going to say to Martin Scorsese? Oh, I don't know, Marty. I think the camera would look better over there. I mean, it just seems, <laughs> you know, it, it's stupid to even think that you could contribute. Having said that, they've been really, um, and maybe because of that, everybody has been stupendous about keeping me in the loop on the adaptations of my films. That started with Clint. Ben Affleck was the same way. Martin Scorsese was the same way. I understand you did have a lot of jobs. like. Mm -hmm. a lot of authors do before they become full-time writers. Yeah. But the one that stands out is that you were a counselor for handicapped children and abused kids. Yeah. Um, can you talk about how that inspired Gone Baby Gone? It inspired Gone Baby Gone, it inspired Mr. River, it inspired Drink Before the War, my first book. Um, it gave me a type of rage, I think, about mm. the issue. So that, that's, that's all tied into this idea that just to see the waste, the level of waste that was done to kids, 
and the, we haven't really solved it, I don't think, as a society. So Gone Baby Gone becomes this question, every layer of that book is what is child abuse. Do you have uh, another book you're working on right now? I've, well, actually, I have a book coming out in a couple weeks called Live By Night, which is my gangster book, set down Prohibition, Boston, Tampa, Cuba. And who might you like to work with as a director? I don't know. That's up to uh, Leonardo DiCaprio already bought the rights to this one. So mm -hmm. he would, I think, ultimately have the choice on the director. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. That was Thanks, fun. Thanks, Christy. That was a blast. Where I come from, you die with your secrets. This is the kind of thing that if you do, Patrick, you want to be sure. Are you sure? No.